Another skill I want to review that um, comes up in this section is uh, computing limits of this form. And you'll notice that this limit sort of looks like uh, some limits that we were introduced to in the text. Um, so the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x divided by x is equal to 1. So in chapter 2, um, we were given the graph of the function um, to give us sort of an intuitive idea. In section 3.3, uh, we were given a geometric proof of this fact. Um, you can also take a look at the, the graphs of the function y equal x in the denominator, okay, which is this line and y equals sine x, which is in the numerator. And you can see that as we get close to zero, I mean, these functions look almost identical. So it makes sense that their quotient is approaching one. Um, this fact holds um, to any function of the form sine of a times x divided by a times x, where a is just some constant, like three or four. Um, so we want to remember these two facts because they will help us to calculate um, limits of this form. Uh, so going back to this example, the first thing I do is I look inside of the sine function and I see 8x. So I'm going to try to get something um, in the form of sine 8x over 8x because I know that the limit as x approaches 0 of this function will be equal to 1. I don't have that yet. Um, you can see I have an 8x here, but I only have a 2x here, and then I have a 3 here. Um, but the thing to note is that if I were to, um, I could, uh, if I were to multiply this function by, say, 4, uh, the, multiply the denominator by 4, then I could get the 8x that I want. Um, but you can't just multiply the denominator by 4 um, unless I do the same thing to the numerator. So if I multiply by 4 over 4, and 4 over 4 we know is just equal to 1, so multiplying by 1 is not going to change my function. So I can actually do that. Um, so I haven't changed the function, um, but I, that will get me my 8x in the denominator. So let's do that. I end up with limit is x approaches 0 of 3 times sine of 8x times 4. I can't forget the 4 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I have 8x. Now what I notice is that um, the 3 and the 4 here, um, I can multiply those to get 12. And recall that there's a limit law that tells me that um, any time I have a limit of some constant times my function, then I can actually pull the constant outside of the limit. So in this case, um, I'm, I can rewrite this as... Uh, 12 times the limit is x approaches 0 of sine of 8x over 8x. Uh, and this will give me um, 12 times this limit, which is 1. And so my final uh, answer is just 12. I wanted to do one more example I thought might help you out with the homework. Um, so in this question, um, y is equal to root 3 times x um, plus 2 times cosine x. And we want to find all the values of x where y has a horizontal tangent line. So we know that um, if, the, if we have a horizontal tangent line, we know that that means that um, f prime of x will be equal to 0 because this is the slope of the tangent line. And if the tangent line is horizontal, its slope is 0. Uh, so let's uh, first start then by taking the derivative. Um, so the derivative of my function is root 3, because uh, this is root 3 times x. So the x is not under the root, by the way. So my derivative is just root 3 um, plus 2 times negative sine of x, uh, which is equal to root 3 minus 2 sine of x. Um, and so this, if it, this is equal to 0 um, when root 3 is equal to 2 sine x or when sine x is equal to root 3 over 2. So the question is, um, you know, that happens infinitely many times, right? Um, and so let's just look at one instance of where this might happen. Um, so when is sine of x equal to root 3? 
you might remember that sine of 60 degrees, which is the same as sine of pi over 3, um, is equal to root 3 over 2. Okay, so let me just draw quickly what, uh, give you a little picture of what that looks like. Um, so, okay, so, um, and you might also remember that, so that's just one value though. Um, and remember sign is positive in quadrants one and two. So there's actually another value, um, and that will be uh, for the angle uh, 2 pi over 3, or 120 degrees. Um, I will also have that sine is equal to So the, I'm just listing two values, that's all, that I can just see um, just from, you know, from what I remember. And you can list other values if you want. But what I also notice is that um, every time, so, so one of the values is definitely pi over 3. But I also want to say that every time I go around by 2 pi, um, that's going to give me another angle um, that satisfies a uh, sign of that angle is root three, root three over two. Um, and I can go in either direction. So any integer multiple of two pi, um, so two pi times any integer. So any, you know, 360 degree rotation I make, um, that angle will also satisfy this equation um, in either direction. Okay, so um, that's uh, sort of half my values. Um, and here I want to say n is uh, an, an integer. And the same is true um, for 2 pi over 3. If I add 2 pi, uh, that gives me another angle that satisfies this equation. Okay. Um, I can, if I go around twice, like this and this, that gives me yet another angle. And I can go in the other direction as well. Um, so another uh, collection of uh, infinite collection of numbers satisfying this equation is 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And remember, 2 pi is just, we just go around, add 360 degrees. Um, and this would actually give me the set of all numbers um, for which the tangent line is horizontal. Um, and you can say this in different um, ways if you want to. You just have to pick a starting angle and then you add your multiples of 2 pi. 